Escape the heat to True North convenience stores and get any size True Oasis fountain drink for a dollar when you use your Shell Fuel Rewards. Cool that thirst with any of your favorite Pepsi fountain drinks for one dollar. As a free Shell Fuel Rewards member, pick the perfect size for you. No matter if you're craving a big drink or a small sip, it's just a buck. Visit TrueNorthStores.com to sign up for Shell Fuel Rewards and save instantly. True North Convenience Stores. Fast. Friendly. Clean. It's Monday. It's August 14th. And the word of the day is resistentialism, which is the belief that inanimate objects are out to get you for spite. Used in a sentence, resistentialism might sound crazy, but it's not paranoid if a chatbot really is listing you as a personal enemy, and that (laughs) does happen. And it's from the original Greek. It's not resistentialism if you have to reset the damn Wi-Fi every 34 seconds. Exactly. You know, I'm not the youngest person on this podcast, but I'm getting there. I'm no (laughs) illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Republicans won't rest until the highest court in the land finds Hunter Biden... Just a guy who did meth a few times. Mm -hmm. We take bets on whether Trump can make it to this episode airing before he violates his protective order. And a very sad white nationalist militia does some dive action role playing. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, very important sports thing before we get started. Mm. Looks like the Zuckerberg v. Musk MMA bout is slowly coming together, and it's going to be happening in Italy. Elon (laughs) Elon Musk was like, I want it in the Coliseum, and Italy's government was like, it's not going to be in the Coliseum. It's not going to be in the Coliseum. I know our one guy. No, you can't have it. Absolutely not. But they are going to do a big charity thing probably in Italy. So what kind of odds do you need for you to bet on Elon Musk against Mark Zuckerberg? (laughs) <laughs> the same odds I'd need to bet on him to win the Women's World Cup. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, I'm pretty sure Elon would have done better on that penalty kick than Megan did. Uh, so that's a bad example, oh, Noah. Okay. But Boo! Like, <laughs> Boo! Nobody likes you. If I thought you knew what you were talking about, I'd argue with you. Uh, in our lead story tonight, for months now, congressional Republicans have been demanding that Attorney General Merrick Garland elevate David Weiss, the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney investigating Hunter Biden, to the position of special counsel. Well, on Friday, when it became clear that the plea talks had broken down between Weiss and Hunter Biden's attorneys, Garland did exactly that, which, of course, led to congressional Republicans expressing outrage that Garland would dare to do the thing they demanded that he do. <laughs> Oh, we smashed into this car that we were chasing. Right, yeah, yeah. no, right, exactly. It robs them of the ability to pretend that those demands would get us any closer to their desired outcome, so how dare he? Right, like that asshole yelling, suck my dick, abusively for years, and then being terrified when the answer is finally, yes, take out your penis and I will suck it right now. Go for it, do it. And now they're like, what? No, no, now you, uh, now you ruined it with consent. The political party. Yeah, right. Now you ruined it with consent. <laughs> the party. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. It's been the political platform for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, this all stems from the Republican obsession over accusations that Hunter Biden improperly used his father's position as vice president to enrich himself. Because, you know, there's one thing that the party of President George Bush Jr. hates. It's when nepotism favors the children of former vice presidents. (laughs) And I mean, well, given their outrage when China fast tracked valuable patents for Ivanka Trump's company and when Jared Kushner roped in over two billion dollars worth of investments from Saudi Arabia and when Donald Trump Jr. simply was in any capacity, (laughs) you can imagine why they'd be furious about the suggestion that Hunter Biden was courting influence. And despite the inability of a highly motivated U.S. attorney that's been investigating this for five years to turn up any compelling evidence of that fact, and the equal inability of no fewer than three separate dedicated congressional committees looking into the same thing to find any <laughs> either, they're still pretty darn sure that evidence is just, it's just around the corner somewhere. Well, now that now that they have a special mm-hmm. counsel, they seem to think special counsel is like leveling up a wizard in D&D, like new spells <laughs> or yeah. something. 
I mean, to be fair, now that he's special counsel reporting to Congress, he's got speak to the dead as a cantrip. Yeah, right? like he's right. got to have that. He finally got enough spell slots. Now, to be clear, the five year old federal investigation that the Trump administration began into Trump's chief political rival's family has turned up a few possible crimes. <laughs> um, not the ones they were looking for. Right. But a few. No. <laughs> uh, he allegedly failed to pay taxes on time once and uh, didn't, ad- or I'm sorry, twice, Ugh. and didn't admit to being a drug user while filling out a questionnaire to buy a gun. And of course, there's nothing Trump supporters hate more than tax shenanigans and nothing Republicans in general support more than reasonable restrictions on gun ownership. So they're <laughs> every guns, bit yeah. <laughs> as angry about this as they were about the uh, you know, whatever it is that they had accused him of originally. Okay, he wasn't doing the thing we were looking for. Hunter Biden, he refused to sell his advisory service to a gay energy company in Ukraine because of his sincerely held <laughs> religious... <laughs> Fuck, hold on. I mean, to be fair, their last guy didn't pay taxes at all. Maybe they're insulted by the half-assery. Right, and we consider yeah, it that's half-assery. It. That's it, yeah. Now, of course, until a couple of weeks ago, it looked like this was all going to be resolved with a plea deal, but the Trump-appointed judge overseeing the proceedings blew that the fuck up and i guess now that the plea deal is pretty much off the table the investigation is going to go forward and because biden's administration is more concerned about the impropriety of biden's doj looking into his son than trump's administration was with the impropriety of his doj looking into his chief rival's son (laughs) merrick garland has elevated the guy already working on the investigation to the position of special counsel a move that many republicans are deriding now despite having called for it for months, because again, actually objectively investigating their claims doesn't work as well for them as screaming cover-up. Yeah, I don't get how Democrats are doing this, right? Like, I don't know how they're, how are they doing their jobs day to day? Because I, I would just have a button on my desk that says, but you tried to overthrow the government, and I would just hit it every time a Republican talked. I'd just right. tap, give it a little yeah. tap. <laughs> I feel like Katie Porter has one of those, right? Like, she probably has one of those in her office. She has no fucks to give, and it's the greatest. (laughs) I love her so much. Now, I should note that one of the congressional committees investigating the Biden family's finances did hear from two IRS whistleblowers who claimed that they were stymied in their efforts to fully investigate Hunter's wrongdoings and that their recommendations for stiffer charges were ignored, thus justifying uh, a special counsel. Um, and, And look, you know, testifying before the 118th Congress puts the veracity of their claims exactly on par with people who say the U.S. government is hiding recovered alien corpses from UFO crash sites. <laughs> so, you know, this is pretty damning stuff. Pretty damning, yeah. The Republican account of Hunter's laptop is a more compelling UFO story than anything we heard about in that <laughs> hearing yeah, about you know, UFO stories. True. Honestly, if Hunter Biden didn't exist, these proceedings would be unaffected well unaffected (laughs) right except that like you couldn't prove any of the allegations were untrue then yeah exactly but but so okay so the point of this isn't the severity or veracity of the charges or even the result of the investigation of course the point is that there are charges and that there is an investigation republicans are already telegraphing their intent to keep this faux controversy on life support throughout the election so that their people can answer isn't your guy facing 78 felony counts and three indictments and counts with yes but your guy's son is facing two misdemeanors that normally wouldn't get charged in a felony gun charge that we would insist is unconstitutional in any other circumstance and thereby be like you know tied in terms of scandal yeah though to be fair if you insist on upholding democracy we're going to incarcerate your drug addicted son has also been the republican party platform for the last (laughs) few years yep it's it's consistent is what i'm saying it it, it feels consistent That's fair. And speaking of keeping up with the news these days and the toll that takes on your mental health, it's time for a word from this week's first sponsor, BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. You know, we usually do fun little skits or songs to promote the sponsors on our shows. But with this week's sponsor, BetterHelp, sometimes we just like to remind you what an incredible and useful service they provide. BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. 
Maybe you need a therapist who specializes in substance abuse or is queer affirming, or in the case of a lot of our listeners, won't tell you that the cure is Jesus. Whatever you need, BetterHelp can help you find the help you need on your schedule. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skepticrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skepticrat. BetterHelp. Because the cure is never Jesus Christ. Nope. Never Jesus Christ. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Purdue Woulda Thought News. Strap on your demonic-themed skis and grab your bacon net because the Supreme Court, yes, this Supreme Court, did a good thing this week. What's a bacon net? I want one. I don't know what it is, but I want I, one. So flying pigs in the bacon net? I stared at it for so long, Keith, and I'm like, because pigs fly. I get Pigs it. fly. I get it. Oh, you're netting them and like it, butterflies? Right, yeah, yes. right, exactly. And you're skiing in hell. Like... They flit, and you need a net because you don't want to hurt their, their, their pig wings. Correct. It's gentle. Anyways, what do they do, you ask? Good question. <laughs> what I, good thing did the Supreme Court do, Eli? They temporarily blocked a bankruptcy deal for Purdue Pharma that would have shielded members of the billionaire Sackler family, which once controlled the company, from additional civil lawsuits over the opioid epidemic and that capped the Sacklers' personal liability. Okay, anything short of making the Sacklers inject the whole bag of heroin, not enough. Right. Also, we get all their money and they all go to jail forever. Sure. Right? Sure, yeah. Yeah, and every member of the family's first name is legally changed to Nut. Support, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nut sack. So here's the story. Imagine if the makers of aspirin secretly knew that aspirin was as addictive as heroin, but they still sold aspirin like it wasn't, and they told people it was actually the opposite of addictive. That's what the Sackler family did. Very clearly. On purpose. Well, it turns out creating the opioid crisis is illegal. So in the last few years, their company, Purdue Pharma, has been sued by some, but by no means all, of the people who they hurt with their lying. And since their family is worth only $6 billion, that was a financial hardship they couldn't quite stand. So they declared bankruptcy, under the condition that they would create a fund to benefit their victims. A fund and I think you saw this coming, listener, that is significantly less money than the aforementioned, thank you, Heath Enright, all the money they have or ever yeah. had or ever will have. Well, it's it's not even as much money as they made by creating the fucking opioid crisis. They'd come yeah. out ahead. Okay, and I'm adding one more thing to the punishment. Every victim gets to watch at least one Sackler detox from heroin pills on demand like whenever yes. they want like a like a netflix service for that <laughs> like you get to watch a sackler reenact any scene you want from requiem for a dream but in real life right anything yeah. you want and if it's the amputation one and they're already missing both arms you're allowed to use a leg exactly yeah so and then you can use the same props for the ass to ass scene if you exactly want. everybody's winning <laughs> yeah so unsurprisingly the justice department whose goals are right in the name of the department was like no not what bankruptcy is for. Actually, kind of the opposite of what bankruptcy <laughs> is for. Please do not let them do this. And a federal court was going to let them do it. But then, again, this Supreme Court, the one we have now with Clarence Thomas and everything, pause that deal while they hear arguments in the next few months. Well, yeah, there's the key, right? So, like, we're at celebrate when they delay doing a terrible thing that they're probably still going to do in case anybody's curious where to calibrate their Supreme Court expectations. Yeah, yeah. that is fair. And and to, to Noah's point, I want to be realistic, right? A long time before the court was this bad, our Supreme Court was declaring corporations people and religious playgrounds public water supplies so mm -hmm. there is a decent chance the supreme court ruling goes the opposite way and this pause is in fact a way for big pharma cronies to enshrine get out of jail free cards into law so while this is good news for now it could end up having very very bad news long term which honestly makes me feel a lot less crazy having to open this story but the supreme court did a good thing so yeah business as usual everyone yeah. at mm -hmm. ease bacon yeah. nets away and next up in headlines, we're going to need some morning show sounds and a big ooh for U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin. 
Oh, I forgot he actually has those. Now. I go on right. vacation for two fucking weeks. <laughs> okay, so U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, she's presiding over the criminal trial of Donald Trump. Sorry, the, the trial with multiple felony charges. The, the one that involves a whole bunch of treason. Uh, the one he got indicted for this year. The, the one from Special Counsel Jack Smith. Well, I, the one in D.C., the one in Washington, D.C. That's right. We're talking about Trump's latest indictment on four different charges related to an extremely stupid conspiracy to obstruct American democracy following the 2020 election. <laughs> I love that. Like, it still depends on what day of the week you decide to listen to. I was going to say, he, not he, everyone he might tunes have to in disambiguate right on more by Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thanks to that indictment, we all got to meet the Honorable Tanya Chutkin, whose courtroom style I would call uh, giving no fucks and getting shit done and crushing it. So before we get into the details, one more moment of just general admiration for Tanya Chutkin. She's oh, the best. God. I feel like she should like her and Eileen Cannon should fight at the end of all of this. Right. Love that. <laughs> so just in case anyone missed it, here's a quick timeline. Jack Smith handed down the latest charges, and Trump got indicted on August 1st. And that means he needed to be assigned a federal judge from Washington, D.C. So they spun the wheel, or whatever they do, and Trump's legal team was like, white guy, white guy, white guy, white guy, no way. I mean, stop! Hey, oh, it's a woman of color appointed by Obama. Oh, Fuck. you hate that to see it. Couldn't have gone worse. <laughs> so that was fun. Then we got the arraignment on August 3rd, and it looks like we'll have an official trial date by the end of the month. And we got a couple of delightful moments last week. The general tone from Judge Chutkin, I think, is my favorite part. When she's dealing with Trump's lawyers, the tone is direct and efficient, but with a tacit go fuck yourself after every single <laughs> sentence. You can almost hear it. For example, they needed to have a hearing about the informational security of the trial. And on Tuesday, Chutkin told both sides to agree on a time for Wednesday, Thursday or Friday to do that hearing. The prosecution said, yeah, we're available for any of those days. But Trump's team responded by asking for the following week. They said Thursday was no good because Todd Blanche, which literally Todd White, <laughs> one of the two lawyers in the entire country, probably at this point, he's willing to represent <laughs> Donald Trump. Right. That guy was too busy defending Donald Trump in a different trial <laughs> regarding treason and national security. He has to be in Florida for that on Thursday. But they made no explanation why Wednesday or Friday was no good other than to say, quote, we lost Friday as an option. <laughs> so so Judge Chutkin heard that and she was like, cool, we're on for Friday. Yeah. Gavel. What, you dropped it, it <laughs> fell off of your fucking daily calendar and now you can't find it? <laughs> Fuck you. God, well, you have to keep in mind, of course, that this comes after his lawyers filed for like a fucking temporal change of venue. Right. They're just like, well, we can't do this soon. Right? We can't. That's <laughs> prejudice against my client. Now is prejudice against my clients. Uh, I believe I have the right for my client to have a slow ass trial. That's in the Constitution, <laughs> isn't it? All right. So that brings us to the hearing on Friday, which was about public discussion of certain types of evidence. As with any criminal trial, neither side is allowed to do anything that would intimidate a potential witness or taint a potential jury member. And Everyone involved in the legal system knows all of that unless they're complete idiots. So hence the hearing with Trump and his lawyers. And once again, the tone from Judge Chutkin was the best part. With Trump himself, the tone is, I'd say, uh, dealing with a shitty child who's about to do something stupid at all times. And you just have to be like, ha ha, ha nope, it looks like you're about to do something dumb. Going to stop you right there. <laughs> and as it turns out, Trump already did something stupid, too. He recently made a social media post that said, quote, if you go after me, I'm coming after you, exclamation. And unless that was a very specific reference to pee stuff during a sexual encounter that he had, mm -hmm. it's very clearly an illegal threat before the trial even started. So among other things, Chutkin reminded Trump's team that they probably want to take away his phone and have him be grounded until he starts acting like a big boy with responsibility yeah. to have those things. <laughs> right. No. And his lawyers have to go into an actual court of actual law and be like, your honor, that was just a general call for violent retribution. He makes threats like that all the time. It's just all the time. <laughs> it's why we're here. Am I right? I mean, I know we're supposed <laughs> to pretend it's not why we're here, but come on. <laughs> I'm just cashing checks. 
(laughs) (laughs) So the rest of the hearing was about explaining exactly how much Trump is allowed to comment in public regarding the details of the trial once the defense team starts getting presented the incriminating evidence against their client. And then Trump would know it, and obviously he's going to go talk about it Mm because he's an idiot. Some of that information is not allowed to be shared outside of the courtroom. And again, any criminal defendant is bound by certain rules regarding this. But according to Trump's legal team, fucking freedom of speech, am I being detained? Smoke bomb, you can't see me. They argued that it would fuck up Trump's campaign if he's not allowed to mention details of the trial and then spin a web of lies about those details. And Judge Shutkin responded by saying, almost exact quote, correct. And just like every other criminal defendant, being on trial for multiple felonies might fuck up his day job, yep. which, to be clear, is unemployed person running for office. Right. And to the fucking Trump supporters out there, like the argument from your guy's lawyer is that limiting the ways he can lie about his felonies will impede his presidential ambitions. How do you square that shit? Yeah. Also, at this point, anybody who believes Trump doesn't need this particular set of lies, right? Just say you're putting on a school play at the courthouse. They don't give a shit about what's true, right? They're buying it. Right, yeah, fair, fair. Okay, so bottom line, if you have any Republicans in your life, they're going to yell about how Trump's being forced into silence here. And that is correct. And it's legal. And it's how it works for everyone else, too, if they're a criminal defendant in a trial like this. So encourage those people in your life to continue being mad and ask them how it feels to be mad. Have them describe their painful emotions in detail to you. It's a fun thing. Oh, yeah. You can record it, play it back, make a little montage. And in Twitch, please, news. Popular Twitch streamer Kai Sinat was charged with two counts of inciting a riot and unlawful assembly last week after announcing to his 6 million plus followers that he'd be giving away, among other things, computers, PS5s, gaming chairs, microphones, headphones, keyboards, and webcams at 4 p.m. in Union fucking Square. (laughs) (laughs) How'd that go? (laughs) Yeah, suffice to say, thousands of people showed up, a riot ensued, the cops reacted violently, and popular Twitch streamer Kai Sinat is going, oh, no, so that's why they have the permits. I get it now. It makes sense now. <laughs> okay, seriously, fuck you on behalf of all of New York. This is one of those few times, like, I'd be rooting for Donald Trump to walk out onto Fifth Avenue. Oh, and win no. <laughs> Just like, win-win. Like, Trump gets trampled by a mob and also, you know, maybe shoots this idiot. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, as someone who still has most of his social circle in New York City, it was so funny to watch all my Facebook friends go from, hey, everyone, stay safe out there. Here it's dangerous to, oh, motherfucker, I hope the NYPD tramples them with the horses. (laughs) With the fucking horse. Give them the horses. Back the blue. (laughs) No, yeah. It's important to mention here that Sinat gave apparently zero heads up to the city that he planned on doing this shit. According to the New York Times, the NYPD learned about this shit at 12.30 p.m. day of, and they learned it through their entertainment unit, which is a thing the NYPD has. And I think we can all agree that that is the Law & Order spinoff that Dick Wolf missed, right? (laughs) Okay, anyone who ever called themselves an influencer, non-ironically... I want you arrested by Mariska Hargaday and Ice-T, for sure. I want you going door to door for the rest of your life, warning your neighbors about yourself and how you said influencer that one time. Fuck Way yeah. ahead of you. But but yeah, so the entertainment unit learned about the giveaway. Um, the cops sent a few officers to assist with potential crowd control, and then suddenly the crowd swelled from a few hundred to over 6,000. At this point, chaos ensues. Uh, according to the Times, quote, Fans of Mr. Sinat darted in and out of traffic, climbing on the hoods of cabs and other cars. Why specify cabs? Just cars that climbed on the hoods. Anyway, uh, continuing the quote, others clamored up lampposts and traffic signs, toppled trash cans or threw objects at police officers. Several set off firecrackers, sending throngs of people running, end quote. And though they didn't say it, I feel like there's sort of an implied and they did this stuff even more than usual for New Yorkers that they should have added there for clarity. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. It's like I choosing a candidate fucking crazy (laughs) so yeah so police then escalated the violence because it's not like these were just innocent trump supporters trying to break into the capitol building to overthrow democracy this was a situation that demanded force Uh, eventually order was restored after at least 66 people were arrested on charges ranging from unlawful assembly to criminal possession of a weapon 
Uh, Police Chief Jeffrey Madry places blame for the incident squarely on the shoulders of Sinat, of course. And let me just say, in New York's defense, like, in my experience, there is literally no event so insignificant the NYPD won't shut down roads and reroute pedestrian traffic (laughs) over it, right? They'd shut Union Square down over a goddamn gender reveal party if you filed the fucking paperwork. But Sinat, unfortunately, did not file the paperwork and instead seems to have simply said, like, what's the worst that could happen if I invite six million followers to the same place at the same time in the fourth largest transportation node in New York City at the beginning of rush hour with no preparation or thought to public?" safety come on insane he needs to be new york city punished like themed around new york city like he has to stand at the top of the stairs out of a subway holding a giant paper map (laughs) and spinning around (laughs) and just like a big sign next to him that says like go ahead i do deserve whatever you're thinking like or, something New Yorky, <laughs> or or worse, he should have to be a Twitch streamer. Oh, okay, calm down, okay. podcaster. Uh, I, so, we're way ahead of that. There are <laughs> I mimes. Don't, I they don't are think. our mimes. <laughs> he's killing it, actually. He's like the most watched Twitch streamer in the yeah, world. I think he's there doing just fine. Really, really successful. He's the world's most yeah. famous mime. It doesn't matter. To so me. okay. So that being said. The cops clearly deserve some of the blame here, right? So, it, first of all, it's not like the boys down at the entertainment unit didn't warn them, right? Um, and it's not like they didn't have police presence on scene before the crowd got out of hand. Plus, when things started to descend into a riot, they didn't ask Kai Sinat to address the crowd and try to calm them down or anything like that. Instead, they removed him from the scene and they went straight to their riot response. And if you watch the videos of the events, the videos of some of these arrests, it's really hard to square the cops' response with the threat of malicious firecracker throwing and hood standing, right? Right. Because every cop everywhere, including the NYPD, of course, is dying to use their new riot gear toys that they have. Mm -hmm. It's like dogs waiting for you to throw that ball, just shaking and spinning with anticipation. But instead of just adorable, it's homicidal most of the time. Yeah, no, in this case, it was just injury-sidal or whatever, but yeah. Kai Sinat's an idiot, but yes, NYPD, fuck you. Yeah, calm down. Sucking his dick a second ago, four (laughs) people watching play Valorant. So, (laughs) now, of course, Mayor Eric Adams wanted to make it clear that this incident was actually emblematic of a larger problem. Kids these days with their Facebooks and their Nintendos. (laughs) In his statement that would seem hopelessly dated to my mother, he said, quote, Our children cannot be raised by social media. Our children cannot get their values, their beliefs from social media and other outside entities, end quote. And as evidence of the crowd's premeditated malice, he added in a quote so anachronistic that Google Docs automatically switched it to an Old West font when I wrote it in the fucking notes, quote, you don't come to get free Game Boys and bring smoke bombs in M80s. (laughs) Wait, (laughs) He said Game Boys? Game Boys. Game Boys and M80s. <laughs> Keeping it topically. <laughs> wow. And in Otter Control News. Well done. Thank you. Nestled along the rocky shores of Santa Cruz, California, lies legendary Point Break, Steamer Lane, whose bodacious waves have delighted expert surfers at all times, day and night, for decades. But one Santa Cruz resident, sick of the bras and bros, has decided to take Steamer Lane back. I'm talking, of course, about five-year-old sea otter, Otter841, who has been on a rampage of aggressively stealing boards from local surfers and generally causing havoc. Okay, yeah, otter. don't be fooled by their adorable appearance. They look like they're always inviting you to have a nice bath with them, and that's going to be great. But then they try to bite off your fingers. That's what happens. And then, you know, they bite your fingers off. They got a taste for human blood now. <laughs> and then you got you got to get them to bite a scuba tank and then shoot the tank with a rifle and explode their face. It's crazy what happens with otters. otters it escalates are, so fast. They are the greatest non-cat animals. And not just because they'll trick you into getting your fingers bitten off and then become insatiable man killers in the wake of the bloodlust. They also juggle. They love. They'll pick they up do the also rocks. juggle. The he, he's got you there. They juggle. So they do juggle. I fucking love that. They do juggle. So, yeah, 841 has become a bit of a viral media sensation, both for her antics in the water, which caused local officials to put up signs warning of her presence, and for her slippery nature. For, though her antics began back in earnest back in June with a viral clip of her stealing a surfboard and then chewing on it (laughs) while a helpless owner watched from the beach, outdoor and wildlife officials still 
have yet to capture and rehome her. <laughs> no, I know. I feel like at some point by now she's like had to dress like a lady lifeguard and hang an I hope they don't look in here sign on the end of a cannon <laughs> or something. Just wildlife officials trying to kayak into a train tunnel that's actually just painted <laughs> onto the cliffside near the beach. <laughs> But not everybody wants to see 841 behind bars. There are several petitions circulating online in support of 841's freedom. One can of we which, just can we give it a name instead of like 24601? Like fucking <laughs> weird Valjean stuff happening. Well, they're, they are with you, Heath, because one of those petitions has gathered over 50,000 signatures. She even has an Instagram page at the Surfing Otter, which many a locally created meme can be seen and enjoyed upon. Will 841 continue her campaign of terror? Will she be captured so that the bedreaded, doobie-smoking public may once again dosh Poseidon's O-holes? In the words of Atlantis Morissette, you ought to know. <laughs> I didn't have a conclusion for no, that story, yeah, no, but I did have that pun. You had the Atlantis Morissette. You yeah. had to use it somewhere. <laughs> and finally tonight, in Krav Maga news, the neo-Nazi hate group Patriot Front is having big sads after getting infiltrated and exposed by one of my favorite people of all time. That person's name is David Allen Capito II, and according to the Patriot Front, he's a super spy for Antifa with mystical powers, huh. and he infiltrated them. And now five of the neo-Nazis are suing Capito for violating their privacy when he exposed them and got them fired from their jobs and kind of generally ruined their lives. Ah, oh, when you suck so bad that you have to sue somebody for forcing you to admit that you're you. Woof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these five neo-Nazis really didn't want their identities to come out. Their names are Paul Gankars <laughs> of Virginia, <laughs> Daniel Terecci of Pennsylvania, Colton Brown Colton of Utah, Brown. James Johnson of Washington, Washington. State, and Amelia Johnson of Washington State. If you Google them, you'd have like all their information, Weird. I would imagine. Yeah, I'll give you a second. <laughs> anyway, here's the story <laughs> of Woe from their lawsuit. Super Spy Capito apparently showed up at one of their meetings and introduced himself as Vyacheslav Arkengelsky or Nick Vasily, probably with a very silly Russian accent yeah, that they didn't pick up as fake. And then he pulled out a 3D printed ghost gun, also probably fake. Then he, I, I don't know, like picked a lock. They, they mentioned that he knows to pick locks magically. And he did a wrist control move. He's super good at karate and Krav Maga. Right, that's like their, their handshake is a, is a yeah. wrist <laughs> <laughs> So he did all that and all the neo-Nazis were like, whoa, ninja, Krav Maga, you're, you're in the club. You're totally in the club. He also convinced him that he's immune to pepper spray. I'm, I'm guessing he was able to like name the city they wrote down on a slip of paper and then spray himself <laughs> in the eyes without crying. I don't know. And he had sure, the he fastest him. kick in the history of the Kumite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those of you listening thinking, why would he need to add a bunch of ridiculous lies to expose Nazis? It's because conservatives always need to meet their downfall in the silliest way possible. It's a natural <laughs> law, everybody. It's nature. You think neo-Nazis use, use Krav Maga? I bet they don't. I bet they don't. <laughs> yeah, oh, I wonder if they feel weird about that. Yeah. Or if they're like, know thine enemy. Oh, okay, Do interesting. It. Yeah, that makes sense. So, <laughs> so once Super Spy Capito was in the club, he started recording all their stuff <laughs> and getting personal information about all the members nice. and aggressively hacking all their computers. The Patriot Front security team, according to them anyway, finally figured him out, but it was way too late and Capito posted a big data dump online, including videos of the group carrying out hate crime vandalism and literally shouting Sieg fucking Heil to each other during their events. And also this included the greatest undercover videos of all time in that data dump. Yes, it did. Because that includes a whole bunch, just hours of this, hours of sad boy white nationalists doing what they believe to be military drills <laughs> to get ready for what they believe to be the neo-Nazi takeover of America that they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, this takeover, it's mostly going to involve marching in very small rectangles yep. <laughs> and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. carrying dead bodies over their shoulder in, again, small rectangles and saying things like, hop, 
and Kia in rhythm with some sort of leader guy, except not quite in rhythm. Well, not in rhythm. To the videos, but, yeah, yeah. yeah so. but they're trying. Maybe just please, please watch some of these videos if you get a chance. We'll have a link to one of them in the show notes. It starts the one I put here. It starts with a very long drill in which a squad of these neo Nazis is trying to just turn left and turn right on command standing in place yes. while somebody says uh-huh. turn yes. left and turn right and they keep they fucking keep getting it getting wrong, it wrong. <laughs> guys, guys are spinning to face each other and getting so mad because they're nose to nose so funny and clearly one of them fucked it up and they both think the other one fucked right, it up because yes, they're idiots yes. and they don't know which one is which oh, oh my god i was weeping with <laughs> Yeah, so I watched this. It's an 11 minute video. I watched it three times in a row just for fun. Oh, dude, dude, listener, does it include them realizing out loud that the folks turning on the inside of the march are going to have to go slower than the ones on the outside? <laughs> yes, it does. We it does. To, it's just the first six minutes is them trying to figure out walking like 15 year old Noah trying to look sober when he got home from the mall. <laughs> yep, correct. <laughs> Correct. On the plus side, though, thanks to this video, I am now 100% ready for a war against these guys with our actual military. I, I yeah, think it's no, time. You Pick guys a date, to... everybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready without our military. Let's I'll do it with <laughs> just Eli. Do it with the just word Just me and left. Eli will fight this entire militia and win, for sure. I don't know how to fight. Eli, do you know how to fight? It doesn't oh, yeah. matter. Big I know time. how to turn okay. left. <laughs> I know how to turn left. Yeah, exactly. Eli's a black belt in Taekwondo. I'm a second degree black belt, and they probably will hold still and hold their heads like boards. So I feel like I feel like I got this one. I think my favorite part is the three person tandem push up Mm -hmm. drill. Oh my god, it's incredible! (laughs) Very much not clear how that's going to (laughs) work into their plan, but they do a three person tandem push up where they're connected like like a Cirque du Soleil thing yeah but legs over the it. other guy's head kind of mm-hmm. so good so- yeah uh-huh. so apparently these people want to do a hard reset of America in a racial sense that's like their mission statement according to the Patriot Front membership within the American nation is inherited through blood and it's only for people with pan European identity and in order to pull that off they might need to destroy Antifa with <laughs> with a very sexual tandem push-up at some point. I don't know. Again, yes, looking forward to this war or fight or whatever we do against them. Yeah, no, I'd be fine with these assholes just showing up at that riverboat in Montgomery. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they should really start doing drills to, like, dive out of the way of folding chairs. Yeah, for me, it's, an, it's an essential part of their defense. Just ducking back like Neo. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> Did you see the part with the shields where they're trying to like hold the shields up on command? Oh, God, and one no. guy keeps putting too big of a gap in their like phalanx that they believe. <laughs> <they're doing. laughs> and the like phalanx commander guy it keeps putting his arm in the space. And he's like, you see the space that I'm mapping out here? You're going to get stabbed with a spear through here. You need to tighten this up. No gaps. <laughs> All right, do it again. One, two, right three. Snap. <laughs> shields up. <laughs> so stupid. All right. Watch the video. On that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that, please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Nathan of the Math, Jeff Kaplan, Dr. Nanners, Ty, Aaron Smith, Shannon Klakowitz, Brian Von Wert, and 78 and counting waiting on Fulton County whose beautiful genitalia could easily honeypot an entire white nationalist militia with nothing but a wink and a smile and a cool push-up thing. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, d d Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off.
Uh, Your Honor, if you would like some assistance, I have in the past made the terrible error of asking Heath to record 10 or 20 minutes before he has agreed to. So I can really help you work on the, the <laughs> approach to this if you want. I uh, I have some pro tips. <laughs> yeah, no, you just make like small changes to a schedule <laughs> once in a while. It's not a giant pain in the ass that you had a child at all. For wow. All oh, time. okay. Oh, all right. It's all Wolf. on the line I, now. I was not going to distance myself from you until you brought the kid into it. Man. Okay, That's but right. exactly what I said is true. <laughs> like, you can also distance yourself if you want to be nice, but facts are facts. No, he's distancing himself because Anna's in control of some missiles somewhere. <laughs> it's just about <laughs> physical safety. I mean, I'm going to take weed from Anna when we get there for the fucking pajama party. I just, I don't right. know. I'm not even. No. I'm telling my son you're an animal cracker. My, my, our job has gotten in the way of your kid. Um, that's right. That's not the other way around. Mm, I still disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Escape the heat to True North convenience stores and get any size True Oasis fountain drink for a dollar when you use your Shell Fuel Rewards. Cool that thirst with any of your favorite Pepsi fountain drinks for one dollar. As a free Shell Fuel Rewards member, pick the perfect size for you. No matter if you're craving a big drink or a small sip, it's just a buck. Visit TrueNorthStores.com to sign up for Shell Fuel Rewards and save instantly. True North convenience stores. Fast. Friendly. Clean.